All right, we're looking at uh, part 19 in, in the series that we've been doing on wild edibles, uh, wild harvest edibles. Stop prepares the table before me and uh, a, a um, takeoff of Psalm 23 that uh, God provides for our needs uh, in so many, so many different ways. And as we <clears throat> kind of launch into this, just a reminder uh, that um, when we're looking at any kind of a health challenge, it's always recommended that you uh, partner with a medical provider that has a similar philosophy of care that you do, um, and that the information provided here is educational in nature, and that if you choose to implement it, that you uh, take um, the time to do your due diligence as you research it uh, before implementing it, um, as you would any other treatment protocol that you might um, uh, engage in, not just blindly accepting it without uh, doing your own research. Thomas Edison said way back during his time that the doctor of the future will give no medicine. That kind of sounds a lot like what, uh, what um, uh, Ellen White has advocated in her messages and ministry of healing and throughout the spirit of prophecy, um, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame in diet and in the cause and prevention of disease. So it's a whole, a whole body approach to uh, health rather than just uh, symptom abatement. Uh, so because we will be sharing some medicinal components to the, the edible uh, components that we'll be discussing tonight, I uh, just want to share that, that caveat as we start. So the thing that I wanted to look at tonight was, uh, is Devil's Club, Opalophallix or Opalopatix horridus. Uh, interesting scientific name. Uh, the scientific name horridus is basically due to the uh, copious spines that are very um, significant in um, sticking you if uh, if you get into them, and they can be very pernicious. Uh, but it's it's also a relative of the American ginseng, and has some similar qualities to to ginseng. It can grow up to be 15 feet tall, so this can be a very large plant. You can see the person's hand in this picture. It's even bigger than the big leaf maple. <clears throat> it's a very uh, very common moist area. Pacific Northwest a mountainous plant. The spines are present on the top surface and the bottom surface of the leaves. And from an edibility standpoint, the very young shoots, you can see down in this person getting ready to pick one there in the lower left, and a handful of those shoots are, are an excellent cooked vegetable. They have a short window of, of availability though, because most of the year it's either in the dormant stage in the winter, or it has the very large leaves of, um, of the regular summertime presentation. But they're about one to two inches long and just before the sheath breaks out, you can, you can get them, the spines are nice and soft and edible when they're young. So you can just tip those, those leaves off uh, in the buds and eat them uh, boiled and, and cooked in that way. So the young shoots are edible. The berries on the other hand, uh, circled there in, uh, in blue are poisonous. So you don't wanna consume the berries, um, they do have some other usability uh, that's not ingestible. Uh, and we'll talk about that as we, as we get further along here. So Devil's Club is, is one of those plants that uh, you kind of generally steer clear of because of its spines, which protects it, but also it does have uh, a wide variety of uses from a medicinal standpoint. So a fairly, a fairly narrow band of edibility, but it does have um, um, an edible harvest. It is an early spring plant. So that's gonna be helpful specifically because after a winter, uh, you wanna be able to have access to fresh food and the fresh greens are gonna be high in minerals and vitamins that uh, may become deficient through the winter when greens are not readily available if you are relying on a wild harvest kind of a situation. So if we look at it from a medicinal use standpoint, it actually ends up being an adaptogen, which basically means that it enables the physiological system that it engages with, i.e. the human body when you eat it, to do a variety of different things and adapt to the situation uh, that is uh, necessary. So you can use the inner bark, uh, the stems, for various medicinal purposes. Uh, it functions in uh, analgesic properties of pain relief, actually has anti-inflammatory and blood purification properties and is good in helping to manage blood sugar uh, levels. So this is a good kind of thing to know about 
um, <clears throat> you know, if you have blood sugar that's regulated by medication and you aren't able to get that at some point, you could use a, a root or a bark um, extract for that purpose. It's also helpful in adrenal fatigue and treatment of infection. So two things that people tend to be most concerned about in light of uh, not being able to access the things that they normally access are food and medication. And if we don't have those worries because we have alternatives to traditionally available food and traditionally available uh, medical sources and medicines, we don't have to worry about those types of, of issues. So that's one reason why I'm really interested in, in edible wild uh, plants and their medicinal properties. It's interesting that Hippocrates said a long time ago, let food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. So they, they have medicinal properties as well as nourishment uh, properties that are a part of them. So the, the Devil's Club is known as a pansea plant, which is kind of interesting. I've uh, just listened to some presentations recently uh, regarding the current so-called pansea or cure-all. Uh, this actually has a much more uh, widely um, scoped area of medicinal impact than many things do. Many things have a very narrow range of use. Uh, so if you're looking at things like uh, skin issues, burns, boils, swollen glands, it's actually very helpful for that. You can make a fresh poultice um, of, the, um, of the plant. You can use it on the skin, wash uh, the, the areas that are, are directly um, challenged. So sores, boils, glands, you can make a poultice out of the, out of the leaves. So when you harvest Devil's Club, you're gonna to wanna to have some protection. You wanna be using some thick gloves that those spines are not gonna get through because uh, that, that would kind of rain on the parade for sure. <clears throat> it eliminates underlying infections and inflammation and promotes healing. So it has some anti, antibacterial, um, uh, antifungal, antipathogenic uh, features that allow it to uh, bring the body system back into normalcy if it's from an infection kind of a, a source. For burns, you can actually use the ash or the devil's club root. So the root itself is not spiny. So you can collect that after you remove the, the upper stems and spines away. Uh, you can dig those roots up and burn them into an ash and then sprinkle that ash dust directly on a burn. You can mi mix that ash with an oil like, like olive oil or coconut oil to make a skin salve. The root bark uh, can be baked and powdered and used uh, directly on burns as well. <clears throat> so the ash from the root as well as the bark of the root can, uh, can be beneficial. <clears throat> So the blood sugaring, sugar lowering effects, the root bark extract, the an infusion, remember an infusion is a tea. Uh, the root bark extract would be taking the, the root bark and extracting the medicinal qualities through a tincture kind of an extraction process. And that can balance blood sugar, particularly in, in diabetics. Many people take a, a diabetic or a blood sugar modulating medication that helps them to normalize their blood sugar. Glucophage, I think, is a, blue, uh, a brand name. So sugar eater, essentially, is what it's called. Uh, but it's useful for helping to treat, treat diabetes. So the infusion, again, it has a tea and has a, a tonic effect, which basically tends the body towards, towards normalcy or normal physiological function. So the leaf buds, again, are edible. And there's a nice picture of the leaf buds piled up there. So it also has some, some beneficial aspects in respiratory issues. Uh, <clears throat> respiratory issues tend to respond well to an infusion or a tea of the inner root bark and stems. So the inner root bark would be, you would shave off the exterior root bark and there would be an inner layer before you would get to the core. Um, it also aids in the removal of, of mucus. Uh, <clears throat> so it's an expectorant quality that it has in it and, and toxins associated with that. Uh, basically, mucus production in the body is a way of the body attempting to remove some kind of uh, impurity, toxin, or pathogen from the body. So when you have a cold and you have a runny nose associated with that, it's trying to, to eliminate that, that bacteria or, or, or viral entity toxin from the body. 
through the mucus. So that's, it's a body cleansing mechanism. But sometimes that can be uh, rather challenging to, to get removed from the body. So this can help, help that. So the decoction of the inner root bark, remember decoction is uh, a boiling of harder root parts uh, to extract the medicinal qualities, qualities from, the, um, from the, the substance so that it can allow uh, those qualities to be used by you. So it can aid tuberculosis and other uh, respiratory-based issues. For joint pain, uh, the internal and external usage of, of Devil's Club is helpful for arthritis and other types of joint pain. So again, a decoction of, of Devil's Club, use it as a wash for the painful joints, and then you can also use a poultice of the crushed bark uh, to the joints as well. <clears throat> so make sure that you don't overdo the internal use of it, can it can, because it can have a laxative effect if done in excess. So with most things, you know, you want to use it in moderation and not in excess. Um, you would probably use it in moderation anyway because of the, the extenuating kind of process of extracting these qualities from it, but they are hidden away there for those who diligently seek, as most things are for those who diligently seek uh, the, the gems of scripture, um, as well as the um, things hidden in nature. Head lice. So here is where the role of the berries comes in. There's a head louse there on some hair and not something that you want to deial with, uh, not a friendly creature at all, but mash those berries into a pulp and massage them into the scalp. So that, that's provided that the berries are available. They typically are available in the fall and through early winter, uh, <clears throat> but they will re remove lice and dandruff. Also shines the hair and, and aids in, in keeping the hair healthy. So gather those berries. I don't know how long they preserve. They may be able to be dried and dehydrated for future use if, if needed for, for lice infection. Lice infection isn't typically a common thing, but it can be a very pernicious thing if it gets, uh, gets initiated. So it's nice to know that there's something natural in nature that, that can be beneficial in that regard. It has some febrifuge qualities, reducing fever. So a decoction of the stems can help reduce fever. Fever, of course, is just as a reminder, is a, is a beneficial quality of the body. Uh, fever treatments are a way that the body uses to, to eliminate a pathogen from it. And uh, that's, it's one of the body's mechanisms of doing that. However, we do need to be able to measure that and not allow it to get out of hand uh, because if it continues to rise, that can cause um, other health issues like brain damage and other breakdown of tissues. As the body heats up, as any biological system heats up, the proteins are uh, loosened up in their, their tightness and they begin to denature and fall apart essentially as they're heated. That's why things that are cooked uh, tend to become more digestible because their proteins and other molecules are opened up and allowed to be broken down. So we can do, do acid-based uh, breakdown of molecules like in your stomach, but also heat-based. So cooking changes the digestibility or the breakdown quality of, of different things. So heat has good factors, uh, but in your body, it can be detrimental if allowed to run away. So it's nice to know that there are some fever reducing um, plants and there's a number of them that we've talked about over the, over the last uh, number of weeks, but this is another one that you can add to your toolbox. <clears throat> so the devil's club, uh, will help heal the body and rid it of the cause of the, of the fever. So again, we refer to it as the, the pansia plant. Tooth pain. So you can dry, uh, chew the dried inner bark of Devil's Club. So you can, once you're in there working on that Devil's Club inner bark, you can pack it away and save it for future use. Uh, so there's some analgesic properties associated with it that we mentioned, pain relief. And you can just directly lay it on the cavity itself if you know, know where it is. Uh, for, for pain relief. Basically, it's when the cavity gets down to the nerve area that it begins to cause a, a painful irritation. It has some hormone regulating qualities, uh, as well as some, some cancer uh, fighting uh, qualities. Devil's Club has the capacity to kill cancer cells. It functions in the, the mechanism of, of programmed cell death called apoptosis, and also helps to regulate hormones. Uh, Lee et al. in 2010, anti-cancer research, 
I had an article of the effects of oplopanex chorius on human colorectal cancer cells. This is one of the more um, common and um, scary cancers, colorectal cancer, but they found that Devil's Club inhibited the proliferation uh, by inducing apoptosis. Basically that's programmed cell death, which is one of the factors that is identify, identifying of cancer cells as they lose that capacity to, to die and go through their normal life cycle. They just continue growing. Um, so they also have an anti-proliferative effect, which is another thing that cancer does. It proliferates, what pro, proliferates without dying. And that's a problem. That's where you start to get your, your tumors and the cells uh, engaging and proliferating and, and um, moving around the body. Um, <clears throat> it contains a compound, a chemical compound called falcarinidol, which in large amounts uh, is found in large amounts in the roots and stems of devil's club. And it functions in antifungal and antibacterial, antibacterial roles. And also it happens to be present in carrot root. So that'd be wild carrot root, as well as even in uh, domestic carrots that, that we eat um, and in ginseng, which is, again, it's in the American ginseng family. So the falcarinidols are compounds that have medicinal roles. And that may be one reason why juicing carrots is beneficial for a lot of different health uh, conditions is the presence of those falcarinidol uh, chemical compounds that aid in um, the antifungal and antibacterial and healing properties of, of those plants. So it's looking at, at a variety of different roles of of a plant that many people um, don't care for just because of its spiny nature, but uh, known as, as devil's club. So when you're collecting it, uh, you wanna harvest the inner bark and the roots uh, and stems along the ground that have lost their spines. That's for the, for the, the roots and stems. Uh, the stems are helpful, but just make sure that you strip, strip the components off of them, dig them at the base, Removing uh, any of the tiny stems that are exposed on the roots. Uh, I have accidentally grabbed onto Devil's Club before going down some steep slopes in the in the um, in the woods, and they can be very difficult to uh, to remove. So the stems can be replanted because they'll actually root themselves and provide a new plant that'll grow and provide roots for future seasons. So again, you want to make sure that the that you're wearing good gloves um, to, to avoid the spines. Uh, women should avoid the spines, uh, particularly uh, if, they're, if they're pregnant, because uh, it, it, it can cause some irritations that um, could cause some, some infection that wouldn't be good for systemically. So the flower you can see in the upper right there, and we saw the berry clusters, uh, the red berries later um, on in the season that were used uh, for the head lice. <clears throat> And that uh, can be made into a decoction. So the Devil's Club decoction, uh, four tablespoons of the Devil's Club root bark uh, in two cups of water. So you chop and grind that root into fine pieces. Uh, so you can see some pictures of that down below here. Mix that uh, with water and then bring it to a boil. You wanna simmer it for 20 to 40 minutes. So that simmering time is the, is the compound extraction time. Again, that's the, those, uh, falconeridol compounds that uh, they're extracting. I'm gonna cool it and it makes a very strong decoction for external use primarily as a wash. If you're gonna use it internally, you wanna use it in, in small doses, but it can be used internally in addition to being used externally. <clears throat> the tea, the Devil's Club tea or infusion. So two words for the same thing, infusion or tea, one teaspoon of the Devil's Club root bark and one cup of boiling water. So the infusion is different than the decoction. The decoction is a longer extraction process. It's gonna be ex uh, extracting more of the medicinal qualities than you're gonna get in just a, a 10 to 15 minute infusion. So boiling water over the root bark, let it cool and then drink, drink it as needed. <clears throat> 